Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to day 12 where we continue to ride around the Himalayan mountains. Today we're off to a place called Sartu. So today is one of the longest rides we do, it's 260 kilometers. We're still going to be riding at high altitude, 17,545 feet. So the nice thing about the hotel we stayed at, we've had two nights here, which just meant you don't have to pack your kit away. Uh, we could get some washing done, which was absolutely brilliant. And the city of Ley, very, very nice. Great to have a walk around it, plenty going off and uh, really enjoyed the stay here. So today, like I said, we've got the biggest ride, 260K. So let's get on that bike and let's get moving. Right, everybody's getting kitted up to get on their bikes. So I think today's gonna to be quite an interesting ride as well. Not only because it's the longest, but also we ride three uh, big passes as well. Although we did the, the highest road yesterday, we're still going up to three uh, over 5,000 meter sort of passes. I think from yesterday's highest road to today, it's kind of, I think there's only something like 10 meters in it. So I kind of noticed last night, because we're staying at about 12,000 feet, uh, sleeping has not been too bad, but yeah, I do sort of wake up taking some deep breaths in the middle of the night. Tonight, I think we sleep at something like 14 and a half thousand. Uh, in the briefing, they've always advised us that we've got oxygen if we need it. The first things first, we've got to try and get out of the city. And um, as always, it's going to be busy. People off to work kids are off to school so um, we've been told to just stay a bit uh, a bit vigilant on the exit here but yeah I had a little walk around yesterday so we've not been getting a lot of time to do that and some of the places are so remote that um, there's nothing about but uh, you know we're right in the city of Ley here you can see all the flags up everywhere I think partly that was because of the uh, Independence Day yesterday um, down here you've got kind of like the main streets see all these guys are just waiting to get picked up I believe to to go to work a lot of them work on the roads etc a lot of maintenance like I say it is a dry state so there's no bars that you can go and get a, a drink there's lots of cafes um, lots of little food eateries loads of pashmina shops and jewelry shops and handcrafts and things like that so we're going to spend the majority of the day sort of uh, exiting uh, Ladakh and then we cross over into a, another region well oh, the chaos has started already we've been really lucky with the weather so far the guys were saying that it's been a lot cooler in recent years where we head back in a couple of days time or so in Shimla they've had some really bad weather so we've been kind of lucky where we are um, I think uh, I read on the news this morning that uh, in Shimla they've had landslides again. Uh, they've had there were 60 deaths apparently. Uh, we are heading back there, so there is a possibility that we we could be heading into some bad weather. Uh, but if you look like today, it's beautiful, just nice and fresh. It will rise over the day. The sun's out. We've got the snow-capped mountains in the background. We've got three days of riding left super looking forward to it like i said every day has been different yeah what an experience so uh, as per usual we uh, we fill the bikes up i think there's still plenty of fuel in there but we just like to get them topped up uh, anybody interested in the fuel price uh, 103 rupees so we're gonna squeeze through and like all the petrol stations uh, they're all um they're all manded so you know, you don't have to put your own fuel in. You should have these in the UK. <laughs> so after we jump back on these bikes from riding those uh, Royal Enfield uh, 350 bullets yesterday, oh, this feels so much better. You kind of really appreciate the bike you've been on. There's a car there just broken down in the middle of the way. Wheels hanging off. So when we start gaining altitude again, the performance on these bikes is gonna start being affected and also, the performance of us will be affected. We've just been told just to take it easy, let the bike do the work. 
Tonight's accommodation should look quite good. They're kind of like the um, the tents we're stopping in, which I'll show you when we get there. These tents are more like safari style Arabian tents. So this guy in front of me here is just driving like a complete dick. There's a lot of people doing India, but taking some serious chances. Look at him. Blind corner, trying to take three cars. In some parts of India we've been to, they drive really aggressively and I don't understand it because in their everyday working life everything is so relaxed. They kind of ain't got a rush in them during the day, but when it comes to kind of rush hour, they're uh, just nailing it. Whoa! I mean you've got a lot of army trucks on this road as well. He's trying to get past the guy that's carrying all the stone. I mean, you don't want to get in a tangle with one of these things. All right, here we go. Hey, it's a luminous fill. Going past me at warp speed. So it looks like we're out the city now and uh, we can start heading up these hills. Start gaining some altitude. Whoa! Whoa! That's what I mean. You just swerved to miss that dog. So take me away. Some other place. Don't wanna wait. Oh my Indian summer. Take me away. I ain't afraid. Calling your name. Oh my Indian summer. So we've kind of we've kind of bottled necked here a little bit. I'm just gonna follow Phil through. We are jam-packed in here. Oh, have we found a we found an exit? The way through. And that's the way to do it. See, even if you split up from the group a little bit, you're soon going to catch them up because you come across situations like that. So we've kind of run out of a bit of road. We're 42 kilometers into this big 260k ride. Uh, we was told there's a bit of off road in. It doesn't look too bad. I can see the guys in the far distance there. Oh, this bite is taking a battering. Oh no, sound. Oh, wrong gear. And the back on the top. Like. Woo! It's nice when you come across a bit of off road. Keeps you on your toes. Is that one of our guys? I think it is. <laughs> He's having a pee stop. Oh, here's the guys, they're here. They've all stopped. So, I wonder if we're having a uh, little chai stop. Already, we're uh, 48 kilometers into the ride. Looks like we're in a little kind of village. Like I say, the weather is absolutely gorgeous today, as it has been every day, but um, yeah, it's not too hot, but it still is quite early. Here we go, first chai stop of the day. <laughs> so that's the uh, the chai stop, first one of the day. Yeah, it's always nice to have a little break, but um, that break was a little bit too early for me. Look at the bridge here with all the uh, sort of uh, religious flags on there. The bridges get covered with them. So 
So we are gaining altitude now. Some tight hairpin turns as we go up the cliff face. The leader did a quick stop back there to put his uh, kind of waterproof jacket on, which is more to stop the wind, I believe. And we're into some tighter hairpin turns. So I think we're going to be going up to that sort of 17 and a half thousand feet again. Starting to notice that power loss in the throttle and the temperature has dropped. And like I said, these three mountain passes we're going over is only 10 meter less than the highest road in the world. But yeah, it is getting a little bit, uh, a little bit chilly now. I might have to stop and do these vents up soon. To start seeing the snow-capped mountains in the background. I mean, look at that, what a view. So we've just stopped at the Tanglar top. This has got an altitude of 17,482 feet. I actually prefer it than the highest road because it's less busy and got great views. Also, the cafe here claims to be the highest cafe in the world. Oh, here's Phil. Where have you been, Phil? Oh, just, uh, to park <laughs> Phil's got the baby wipes out. Can only mean one thing. The world's highest poo. Got these guys here just like the maintaining everything. So I've just cracked out the uh, Rooker gloves. First time I've wore these. Um, very nice quality. Uh, these are windproof, waterproof, and uh, also breathable. So yeah, it was getting a little bit chilly. This is quite windy, you can probably hear. Oh yeah, I can notice the difference straight away. Ooh, big pothole. I'm quite surprised there's not more people riding this road for the amount of people out yesterday, but maybe because it was like the uh, Indian Independence Day. But yeah, this has been great so far. Done 110 kilometers. Still got a fair way to go. So we've just stopped for another cup of chai. We get a little bit of lunch here as well. All the bikes are lined up. As you can see, we are in the middle of nowhere. I'm just gonna take you for a little walk inside this place here. It's always interesting to see how they operate inside. I'll just uh, step past the uh, luminous fill. Cheers, bud. Oh, what have you got? Very nice. So they're just doing the uh, alu paratas over here. As you can see, there's a selection of drinks and crisps. Here's the little kitchen. I've just checked the altitude, but uh, just over 15,000 feet at the minute. So I've just grabbed myself some of the uh, alu paratas. Really nicely done. These are my, one of my favourite snacks since we've been on this tour. As we ride through this valley, the gusts of wind have really picked up. I just stopped to change the batteries in the GoPro and my buddy stopped with me and his bike blew right over. Luckily he's not done too much damage. He's just been the, uh, the hangard. Plus trying to pick a bike up at 15,000 feet is hard work. On the straight back there, I was giving it full throttle in fifth gear. I couldn't get the bike over 85 kilometers and I've had this bike up to 120. So I think a combination of the high altitude and the crosswinds has made a massive difference to the performance. Look at these guys here on the mountain bikes, cycling up. I mean, it's hard work just being on the bike. Oh, that one looked pretty deep. Whoa! Whoa! Wow, that was deep! That was a bit deceiving. Oh my God. I'm soaked. <laughs> Chris, have I got more of this? I don't think they went through the bit we did. Right. 
Alright, get it in the right gear. What's he say? Oh, he wants us to turn around. Go back up. Okay. He wants us to go up. Yeah, I think he wants us to turn back. He wasn't happy. I don't know what the alternative is. Because see a road that went off the edge there. See a road down there. Ah, there's a turn off back there. <laughs> We've saved the hassle of a few bikers going down there and upsetting the tarmacers. Uh, didn't even see this road. Oh, it's a bit sandy and bumpy. Oh, just keep rolling down. I think I'll uh, opt. <laughs> opt for the uh, non-water route. Oh. Go this way. No, it was like that. What have you been doing? Uh, went for a little mud shower. No. <laughs> I haven't come on. I could prove it. That's stone chips. Have a look at Phil's bike. Oh. Oh, there's, a, yeah, there's a bit of a gap there. So it's time for the uh, third chai of the day. So it's really hard walking around. 16,000 feet we're out here and we're going to go higher. Just trying to zoom in on the guys that are a bit further back, and uh, it looks like they're having a few problems. I think they might have had enough. That section over there, where we got diverted from, um, has proven to be a little bit tricky. That road we just come down over there, that was Le, Le Chungla Pass. So that's the second pass we've done. We didn't stop at that one. We just carried on. Right, like I said, we're at 15,000 feet. Uh, we're going to climb up and go over to this uh, third pass. Um, if I have a look, I think we've got 55k to do. We're off. So just as I come around this corner, I can see a, an old lorry that uh, looks like it's gone off the edge. Whoa. Like a lot of these vehicles, they kind of get stripped. And there it is. It kind of makes you wonder how it happened. Did it just go off? Did it get hit by any rocks? It's got like a wooden floor in there. <laughs> so literally, just around the corner, I can see another one that's gone off the edge. With less than 20 kilometers to go, we found this amazing stretch of road. Um, I think today's not been too testing. Again, we've had some really nice bits of road, a little bit of off-road. Every day has been completely different. Right guys, we are here. This is our camp. These are our tents. So 
So uh, this is tonight's setup. We've got two uh, single beds, but I've been told through here um, we have a, an actual plumbed in toilet. More like glamping than camping in these Arabian style tents. Um, unfortunately, we've got the snore, we've got the snore again next door. Tonight, we are sleeping at 14 and a half thousand feet. They've got the fire lit, they're making a nice curry, and the beers are on the float. Hope you enjoyed the ride today, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Over 5,000 meters, over 17,000 feet. Got another water crossing. Whoa. Whoa. And occasionally, you ever come across some beautiful waterfalls like this, and we are going through this tunnel. Definitely uh, Yogi Bear territory. I mean, that just looks amazing. 